Good morning. Good morning, everybody. We're just going to wait for it to update and let everybody we know that uh, we are live. Welcome to prayer with Jesus as Jesus that. Uh, please position yourself well this morning. We're going to spend time in prayer. Uh, that's the whole mandate this morning. We've been building up for an entire week to shall we pray. Don't judge me for wearing the t-shirt again. <laughs> But it's just a reminder to us that God is good and we're going to spend some time praying. We were praying earlier on in the early hours and we're back again uh, just to join our faith with yours. I want to check the sound if you guys can hear me. Everybody I usually check the sound with is here. <laughs> so I need you to check the sound for us uh, if you can hear us nice and clearly. Uh, and then we're going to give it a minute or so and we're going to pray. Uh, but good morning. Good morning. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we received a, we can safely say, about 2,000 and more uh, emails. Um, thank you, EST, um, for letting me know that the sound is good. Um, we received about over 2,000 emails, so there's a lot of praying that's going to be taking place today. Uh, it's a different format, uh, and I want to encourage you that you also get into the same groove. All of us are on our feet we're getting ready to lift up our voice. We're getting ready to pray. So I want you to participate this morning. Um, you're not here to watch. You're not here to watch. Um, you can go ahead and write it in the comments that we came to pray. We came to pray. I'm going to give it one more minute before we roll. Um, just to start us off, I'm going to ask us to open up our Bibles to Mark 9 as just our base before we get into it. Mark 9, leave it there. We'll pick it up and and see as the Lord directs us. But yes, we're getting ready to pray, so uh, get comfortable. If you're in your room, feel free to move around. If uh, you need to go outside, go outside. If you need to put on your headsets and take a walk, uh, do whatever you have to do to make sure that you are participating here today. Uh, it's not a normal setup. Uh, we're going in for the Jaguar. That's how you say it in English, right? Yes. We're going in for the Jaguar. Uh, we're here to fight for a couple of things. We're here to lay claim of a couple of things. Uh, we're here to speak the word of God over a couple of things. A lot of the prayer points that we're dealing on are not entry level. It's serious, real matters. People are going through the worst situations you can think of. And God has given us the opportunity and the privilege to use prayer to get answers. The Bible tells us when we pray and answers and prayers are answered, that the world looks at what takes place and gives God glory. So our main aim today is to make sure by the time we say goodbye, that everybody's eyes are turned towards Jesus to say, Lord, thank you for the great work you've done here today. This is not some magic prayer. This is not some event. This is not some special prayer. This is the prayer you and I can have every single day of our lives. It doesn't have to be set aside for moments. It is an opportunity that you have. You're driving in your car, you're washing dishes, you're cleaning the house, you're sitting at your desk in the office, you know, your pee break, go to the bathroom and just go blast. That's what we want to encourage, that prayer is not sectioned. It's an opportunity to communicate with God at any given opportunity and any given moment. So I want to encourage you to this morning, I want to say tonight because we haven't really slept. I want to encourage you this morning uh, to participate. Let's pray as we start uh, the session. Father, we thank you. We thank you that uh, prayer is made available to us. Uh, thank you, Jesus, that you take time to teach us on prayer. That is not a byproduct of our Christian walk. It's an important part of our Christian walk. And Father, this morning, we want to hand over this prayer time to you. We, we want to pray for those who haven't prayed in a while. We want to pray for those who have been praying for a while and somewhat have been left discouraged because they're not seeing that which they've prayed for. Father, we want to pray for everybody that's in the room this place, Lord God that this time will be effectful, that this time will be productive, that this time will be exactly what we need. I wanna ask Lord God that you open each and everybody's mouth. Lord God, I come against this becoming such great lie that's gonna be cut into pieces and put on TikTok. That's not what we're trying to do here, Lord God. What we're trying to do this morning is fight for destinies. What, what we're trying to do this morning is lay claim of the promises of God. What we're trying to do this morning is to say, devil, you've played and messed with us way too long. We came to fight. We came to speak the word. We came to lay hold of God's promises. We didn't come to get great Instagram moments. We came to seek the face of the Lord. We didn't come just because we want answered prayers. We came because God is in 
in the room. And we know that if you're here, Lord God, there is fullness of everything that we need pertaining unto life. Lord God, as we wake up this morning, give us utterance. Give us the confidence, the boldness to step out in confidence, Lord God, to lift up our voices to pray. Let no one feel inferior in this place. Let no one feel left behind. Let no one feel that their English is not good enough. Their vocab is not good enough. Father, we declare that each and every one of us, whether we've been saved for many years or we're two days in, today is the day we lift up our voices and pray. Mudimwaka, we pray that this time will be effectful for two main reasons. One, that you will answer prayers, but two, that Lord God, we will encounter you. Father, I pray that this is not just another session for us to see what we can get from you. I pray, Lord God, it becomes a moment in time that we can mark where we see your glory, where we see your goodness, where we see your kindness. We pray, Lord God, that we encounter a true God today. Not just a God who answers prayers, but a God who loves us. Not just a God who gives us the things we want, but a God who has great plans for our future. And Father, we pray in the mighty name of Jesus, and we thank you for the healing that's going to take place. We thank you for the restoration that's going to take place. We thank you, Lord God, for those who are going to be set free from all the things that have been binding them. In the mighty name of Jesus, we hand over this time to you, great King. We thank you and we exalt you in this time. Thank you that only your name will be lifted. Thank you that only you will receive the glory. Lord God, no power can be attributed to any of us. We know that the power comes from you. We know that the healing comes from you. We know that the restoration comes from you. We know that the freedom comes from you. We know that the answers come from you. Lord God, no man has the capacity to answer. Only you can answer. Therefore, Lord God, we want to place the glory in the right place. It belongs to you. Lord God, I pray that by the time we finish... And miracles starts to take place. And testimonies start to stream in. That Father there will be no confusion. About where the source of the power is. There will be no confusion. We won't think we were lucky. We won't think it's because of others. We won't think it's because of our connections. We won't think it's because of other things. Lord God we will be clear. That this is the doing of the Lord. And Father we will see it. And others will see it as well. Father, we dedicate this time to you. As we come to spend time with you this morning, Lord God. You said in your word that we are free to come to you boldly. We can bring petitions to you. We can bring thanksgiving to you. We can bring our worries and burdens to you. Father, we are here to cast. We're here to cast. We're here to cast our burdens, our trials, the things that have laid burden and heavy on us, Lord God. Father, we pray that only you get the glory, that only you get the praise in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. This belongs to you. It belongs to you. It belongs to you. And we give you all the honor and all the praise this morning, Lord God. And as we get ready to pray, oh, great Holy Spirit, give us utterance this morning. The Bible teaches us. That when we don't know what to say, you tell us what to say. I pray that you will infill us with your presence. Woo! I pray for an infilling of the Holy Spirit all over, wherever you are. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I want us to look at Mark 9 before we get into prayer. We are going to pray today. We are going to pray today. We... we <laughs> I want you to get that very clear. We are going to pray today. Don't be too fixated on hearing us or, or, or making out. It's not that type of life today. You, you, you got you to gotta set your heart and mind right that where you are, you're not even looking at the phone or the laptop or the device that you're using. You, you are in prayer. All you need to hear is the prayer point. From then on, you run with it. I want you to know that God gives you enough utterance for you to speak today. Even if it's on an issue you've never prayed before, I dare you to open up your mouth today and watch God move. I dare you to stand in faith and pray for somebody else like it's you. I know you don't have children, but when you pray for children today, I want you to pray with vigor because you know God can do it for you one day. I know, I know your parents are not alive anymore, but when we pray for parents that are still here, I want you to pray with vigor like yours are in the room. I, I want you to take it seriously today. You, you're not here to watch anybody. I'm not even going to stand in front of the screen long enough for you to see us. 
The mission today is for us to pray. We are a generation that has been starved of prayer. You, you want to have hands laid on you. You want to go to gatherings. You want to go to spaces. Yet when it comes to the things that keeps us and sustains us, wow. we're nowhere to be seen. We have no prayer muscle. We are weak when it comes to prayer. We've got to be tantalized into it. And I believe that God is starting a new thing with us this morning. That no longer will prayer be an afterthought. No longer will fasting be because we want something. No, we we come and we fast and we pray because we seek you. We pray that this is a beginning where the remnant will be seen. And how will they be known? They'll be known by their fruits. What are some of these fruits? These fruits is an understanding of God's placement of importance when it comes to time and communion with him. So you're not here to watch anybody. And if you plan to do that, you might as well link off and watch the catch up later. But we came to pray this morning. Mark 9, let's take it from 17. It says, a man in the crowd answered, teacher, I brought my son who is possessed by the spirit that has robbed him of his speech. Whenever it seizes him, it seizes him, it throws him onto the ground. He foams from the mouth, gushes with his teeth and becomes rigid. I asked your disciples to drive the spirit out, but they could not. Only God can do it. Mm, I don't want us to get confused. I don't want us to, to, to trend tomorrow and they say, it was their prayer. No, it was their God. Yeah. Ah. I don't want anybody to come and put accolades on us and say it was us. It was the, the prayer. Getting, there was just something special about that day. No, there was nothing special about that day. Every other day is special when you're moving with God. Uh, so he says the disciples were not able to do it. So he's come to the real person who can do it. Listen to what Jesus says, you unbelieving generation. And it sounds like Jesus is talking to us today. Mm. That we would rather go to candles and stones and lights and enlightenment before we go to the maker of heaven and earth. Is it possible that we are an unbelieving generation? And even when we come this morning, there are more who are trusting in our prayer more than their prayer. I came to tell you that the unbelief must go. It's your words and your faith and your commitment and your asking of God today that's going to bring the change. Jesus replied, how long shall I stay with you? How long should I put up with you? Bring the boy to me. How, how long should I tell you that I am the way, the truth, and the life? How long should I tell you that I came for the sick? How long should I tell you that only I can raise the dead? How long can I tell you that no sickness have a right in your body? How long must I stay in order for you to see I am the answer you're looking for? What is it that I must do for you to understand that there is no other alternative outside of me? Bring the boy to me. You're the boy today. Come to your father. Verse 20, so they brought him and when they did, the spirit saw Jesus because you see the ultimate authority stays with him. Matthew 28, Jesus comes. The first thing he says to the disciples, he said, I've been given authority over everything in earth and in heaven. So when the demons see Jesus, they immediately recognize who the authority is. They know that the story has changed. See, demons don't run because of you. They run because of him. Woo! Bible says it immediately threw him into a conversion. He fell to the ground and he rolled and he was foaming at his mouth. Jesus then asked the father's boy, how long has he been like this? Somebody says, I've been unemployed for five years. My marriage has been going down the drain for, for the past 10 years. My kids are going out the window. I don't know what's going on with them. And he responds, he says, from childhood, there are some things that have been around for a while. But I love how the story ends that no matter how long they've been there, when they encounter Jesus, if they must go, they must go. We don't have time. We've got to pray. The man asked him that Jesus, if you can, because you see he's encountered the disciples who couldn't. You've come across people and things that couldn't. So you think that the same way those things responded to your situation is the same way that Jesus is going to respond to the situation. I'm talking about prayer this morning. That because the disciples were unable to do it, he says, if you can. Jesus responds, if you can. Everything is possible for the one who believes. It's not a question of whether or not Jesus can do it. It's a question of whether your belief is in place. The father immediately recognizes where he's faulted. He says, I do believe, but help me with my unbelief. And before we pray this morning, this is our very first prayer point. Father, help us with our unbelief. 
We, we've tried witch doctors, help us with our unbelief. Mm. We've tried boyfriends and girlfriends, help us with our unbelief. We've tried depending on careers, help us with our unbelief. We've tried depending on money and status, help us with our unbelief. We, we've tried a couple of things that have put us in a place where we can easily not believe. And this morning when we approach prayer, we don't want to come the same way. We want to believe that everything we utter this morning, because you are there, it comes to pass. That's our prayer. Let's just pray that. And I want you to make it personal. Help me with my unbelief. And maybe I believe that you can help me with that, but you can't help me with that. Let's just pray for that. Can we do that this morning? Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, here we are this morning, Lord God. And we just want to pray that you help us with unbelief. Woo! Lord God, we don't want this to be an activity where we just come together and it's a great life and it's captured. And we said some good English words and we sounded profound and we stringed the long sentences together. But Father, help us with our unbelief. Ah, those areas that we've given up on, those areas where we've slacked on, those areas where we don't trust anymore. Lord God, help us with our unbelief. I, I'm stricken with grief. I don't believe that this pain will go. Help me with my unbelief. I've been looking for work for so long. Help me with my unbelief. I've been waiting for healing for so long. Help me with my unbelief. I've trusted that one and this one and they've let me down. Help me with my unbelief. Lord God, let me not miss the opportunity to lift up my voice and tell you the truth that I do believe but sometimes I struggle with unbelief. And Father, today when I approach you on your throne, that's the very first thing I want to put before you. Help me, Lord God, to trust that there is no other place. There is no other place for me to go. There is no other refuge. There is no answer, Lord God. Help me with my unbelief. I believe it for others but I don't believe it for me I believe it works only when you do this but I don't believe it works when you do that help me with my unbelief help me with believing that I'm worthy enough I'm worthy enough of receiving your healing worthy enough of receiving your grace help me with my unbelief no more shake him, but has sat out of the Father, we come against the spirit of unbelief. Devil, you picked the wrong ones today. We came to remind them, Holy Spirit, that they are called of you. We came to remind them, Holy Spirit, that they are children of God. We came to remind them, Holy Spirit, that greater is he is than he that's in the world. We came to remind them that their God is loving, their God is merciful, their God is gracious, their God can hear, their God loves them. Father, we fight this morning on their behalf. That the spirit of unbelief cannot take place in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. As they utter words, Lord God, you perform. As they utter words, Lord God, you come. Thank you that while they are yet speaking, Lord God, you hear their cries in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We come against unbelief this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus, we honor you, great King. And Father, as we get to pray this morning, as we get to lift up our voices, Lord God, we turn our attention to you, Lord God. That you who can not only just help us with the problems we're facing, you can help us with our unbelief. See our hearts this morning, Lord God. See our desperation. Have mercy on us, Lord God. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we thank you and we honor you. Thank you, Lord God, that this is going to be a fruitful time. Thank you for the 2,000 plus people who sent emails, who took time to write what's on their heart. Thank you, Lord God, they didn't write those emails just to be counted as numbers, but they wrote those emails because they knew you were an answering God. Answer them today, great King. Yes, yes. Oh, your word tells us that you're not only hearing, but you're an answering God. Your word tells us in the morning when we raise up our voices, you're a God who hears. Answer us, dear King. And not because we are worthy, because we are unable to do it without you. And Father, we recognize our limitation this morning. And we ask that you forgive us for doing it in other ways. We bring it to you this morning. And Father, we pray that as a community, as a family, that we are not here to listen out to our prayer point, but we are here to pray and trust God for our family. 
So we're not looking for prayer points, Lord God. We're looking to lift up our voices to you. We're not looking to see if we're counted amongst the many. We know that you see and hear us. And Father, as we pray this morning, let it be your name that is exalted. Let our focus be on you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Thank you that people will begin to speak in tongues in the comforts of their homes. Woo! Thank you, Lord God, that we are there. Well, we're not afraid to, to, to encounter the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord God, that you do a new thing this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. We got a lot of prayer points. And I don't even think it's prayer points, but I think it's just, like I said, we got over 2,000 emails and we try to group. My knee is giving me. Thank you, sir. Oh, thank you, Lord. Maybe we need to pray for the knee as well. Amen. <laughs> uh, we got over 2,000 emails. And what we did is we grouped them into different, uh, we call them themes, uh, that we just saw recurring. And some of them will call out specifically by what was mentioned. We won't be mentioning any names. Some of these are quite uh, sensitive. Uh, but we're going to pray today. Again, I want to say it again. We, we're not praying just for your prayer point. I know you sent an email about grief. And you're going, oh, nobody's died. I'm cool. I'm waiting. I'm waiting for you guys to talk about unemployment. Then I'm going to join in. No. Uh, it's shall we pray. We are coming together, standing in agreement. The Bible says, if two shall agree upon a thing, it shall be established. So we are in agreement this morning that every prayer point that we will raise to the Lord, that God will hear it and he will answer. So you're not watching, you're participating. There's quite a few. I think there's about 38. And we're going to try to get through as many as we can. Like I said, it's not so much about us standing in front of you. Probably this is the last time that you'll see me this closely. I'll only come close to lead us into the next prayer point. But we are praying. Get yourself a bottle of water. If you haven't prayed this long in a while, I suggest you move around. Uh, you're not used to praying with a lot of people. Whatever that's going to make you get through the next 40 minutes. I need you to do it, but I need you to do it with your mouth moving. Does that make sense this morning? Uh, we're going to pray first for health. We're going to pray first for health. And this is, speaks to a number of things. These are some of the emails that we got. Ovarian cysts, we got ulcers, we've got asthma, we've got hereditary illnesses, we've got TB, meningitis, HIV, we've got diabetes, we've got high blood pressure, we've got back pain, uh, glycoma, we've got severe acne, skin cancer, blood cancer, HPV, we've got sickness in small children. And I know that maybe you've got a one that you know, probably you've got a family member or another. We are going to be praying for them. If you know the illness by name, we're calling it by name. The Bible says, every knee shall bow let those knees bow today can we pray for health this morning let's pray for the health of the people of god father in the mighty name of jesus christ father we thank you that your word teaches us lord god that by your stripes we were made whole and father this morning we lay hold in the mighty name of jesus christ for healing we want to declare in the mighty name of jesus that he Thank you that what you did on the cross, Lord God, was on our behalf. Lord God, we call them out by their names. Every ovarian cyst, every fibroid, every ulcer, every asthma attack, any hereditary illness, TB, meningitis, HIV, all forms of cancer from blood to bone to breast to prostate. We call you out by name. Diabetes, high blood, headaches, back aches. Glycoma, skin severe diseases, skin cancer, HPV, sickness in children, whatever that it looks like. Lord God, we're calling it by thy name. I want you to call it out by its name. It's as bad as a cancer right through to a toothache. It's not our portion not to be well. And this morning, Lord God, we want to declare in the mighty name of Jesus Christ that healing is our portion. Thank you, Lord God, that you are in your business. Thank you, Lord God, that this is what you say. When you hung on that cross, you were intentional, Jesus. Receive it, Thank you. That every answer that has ever received the name, that everything that has ever been mentioned by the Father, you have a faithful and that's what you say. Follow in the mighty name of Jesus Christ for God to stand this morning. In agreement, Lord God, that healing is our portion. Cancer, we call you out by 
your name, HIV. We call you to dry up where you are. Every cancer that wants to destroy and bring down our lives. Your body this morning. And we speak the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus that speaks better things of us. In the mighty name of Jesus. We command, Lord God, that you say, devil, you can't lay sickness and diagnosis over our lives. We pray for our children, Lord God, that no sickness can take over them. We pray for our parents, Lord God, that no sickness will take over them. We pray for our spouses, Lord God, from knee pains to back pains to headaches to acne, whatever that it is, Lord God, if it does not come from you, Lord God, we stand in agreement with your word, Lord God, that it is not a portion. Therefore, Lord God, we stand in the truth of your word that says what Jesus Christ did on the cross can never be undone. And this morning we stand upon that truth in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Lord God. Thank you for healing. Thank you for healing. Thank you for healing. Thank you for healing. Thank you for signs and wonders. Thank you for healing. Thank you for signs and wonders. Thank you for healing. Lord God, right now where they are, the pain in their bodies, thank you for healing. Lord God, thank you that you're the God who raises the dead. Thank you. You're the God who brings dry bones together. Thank you that you're the God who restores. What is it that you cannot do? What is it that you cannot heal? What is it that is impossible for you? Lord God, amaze us this morning. Blow us away with your might. Blow us away with your grace. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus, I want you to keep on praying. Don't grow weary. Keep on praying. That's what we came to do this morning. Come on, call them by name. If you've got family members who are not well, call them by name. Say, Sipati, it would be well with you. Sipa, you rise from that bed. Come on, call them out by their name. If it's your mom, declare God's healing over their body. If it's your parents, speak God's goodness over them. In the mighty name of Jesus, that healing is our portion. Father, we thank you. The devil has kept us in a whirlwind of lies of making feel that that sickness is a part of our lives. We come against it in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We speak healing. You're a miracle working God. Even those diagnoses where the doctors have told us they cannot be reversed, let them be reversed in Jesus' name. Even those who've received letters that they can't live past a certain time. Father, we've seen you add years on people's lives. Add years on their lives, oh God. Woo! Those who are told they'll never stand again. Those who are told they'll never see again. Those who are told they'll never speak again. Father God, heal them this morning, great King. We're trusting you for healing this morning. Shabbat Come on, we're going to move over to school fees and school. We're talking anxiety for exams. We're talking fees being covered, being accepted into university. The fear and the uncertainty of the future because of career. Come on, I know you're done with school. You've got an MBA. You're working on your drug trade. You're doing good. I want you to think of that nephew, that niece, that young person that's coming through in your community. That the devil will not lace us with depression under the umbrella of school and education. That we know that education is important to God because he teaches us to teach. And Father, we thank you, Lord God, that you open up doors of education this morning. Be it funds, Lord God, we cause them to open this morning. Lord God, we come against the anxiety of exams. You said you will make mysteries known unto us. What is maths? You said you will make mysteries known unto us. What is accounting? You said you will make mysteries known to us. What is tax? You said you will make mysteries known to us. What is biology? Father, thank you that whatever things that we feel are a barrier from us getting to the point that you do, we have the mind of Christ. Therefore, Lord God, we pray for those who are in exams and writing, that they walk in bold knowing that they've got the mind of Christ. Make mysteries known unto them. Teach them how to study better. Holy Spirit, carry them through. Give them the energy and the strength and the wisdom. We thank you for divine strategy in this season. Thank you that depression will not lay a hold of them. That we have not been given the spirit of anxiety, but we've been given a spirit of love, peace, and of a sound mind. As they walk into those exam rooms, a 
sound mind. If they sit down to send in assignments, a sound mind. As Lord God, they study, they work, a sound mind. We declare it in the mighty name of Jesus. No longer will depression take over them. Come on, let's pray. Let's pray for all the students, matrix, varsity students, those who are continuing to study. Thank you that you make a way in the wilderness. Thank you, Lord God, that you bring provision. Come on, let's study for those fears. Let's study for those fears. That, Lord God, you release funds for us, Lord God. Let these kids study. Let them excel. Let them travel the world. Let them begin to bring solutions to the economy, Lord God. Thank you. That, Lord God, you can bring streams and deserts. Thank you, Lord God. That silver and gold belongs to you, Lord God. We open up the heavens, Lord God, for provision for them to study their works. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Psalms 34. Psalms 34, 18 speaks about those with a broken heart and a crushed spirit. One of the emails or many of the emails that we received is of grief. Now the devil has a funny and sneaky way of making us believe that when we're in the season of grief that God is far. Yeah. And we came to declare that the word of God tells us that he's near. Yeah. Uh, the devil has a way of making us believe that God can't reach us where we are. Yeah. But the Bible tells us that he will go to any lengths to find us. Yeah. In fact, he gives us Jesus to reconcile us. Yeah. So we want to speak of those who've lost loved ones in this season. It may be 10 years ago and everybody expects you to be over it. You don't have to be over it. You can be honest with God to say, Lord, it still hurts. It could have been two weeks ago and people are expecting you to be functional again. It's only through the power of the Holy Spirit that we can go back into the world even though we're crushed because we walk with one who knows how to comfort us. This morning we stand in agreement with you that so shall his peace rest upon you. So shall the Lord carry you in this season. So shall the Lord give you new ways. So shall he teach you how to live without them. So shall he give you strength to be a blessing to others even in this season. So shall he stick closer to you for you to know that he is a God who stays even when there is loss. Yes. Father, we cover those who are experiencing grief. Those who've stood before open graves, Lord God. Those who've had said sorry and goodbye to their families. Those who have said goodbye to their mothers, to their fathers, to their siblings, to their children. Lord God, we pray this morning. Come on, you're not watching, you're praying. You're not watching, you're praying. We're praying for grief and loss. That God would comfort them. That God would cover them. That God would love them.
not forgotten you. He is a God that stays when others leave. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. God has not forgotten you. The loss does not mean God has forgotten you. He remembers you when he is there. In the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, Father, we pray for divorce this morning. Those whose families are being torn apart. Whether it's infertility, whether it's marital problems, whether it's the loss of love. Lord God, for whatever reason that they have come to this place and juncture of divorce. We thank you that marriage comes from you, great King. We thank you, Lord God, that it's an institution that was formalized by you, great King. And Father, we pray for those who are broken at the act of divorce, Lord God. The breaking of the heart from a union that was once blessed by you. Father, we bring the children to you this morning. As families separate, oh, restore, great King. 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 Lord God, we fight for marriages today. That they are the brink of breakup, Lord God. Father, we cry out, restore, great King. Restore, great King. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we come against whatever mechanisms that the devil is trying to put in place to break family structures. In the mighty name of Jesus, to have healthy children and healthy marriages. And Father, this morning we lift up our voices that you who brought us together, let no man put us in something. Lord God, help us to together. Help us rule these families together. Thank you, Jesus, that families are important to you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus, we speak a hedge of fire around marriages in this country, oh God, on this continent, oh God. Father, we declare that marriage belongs to you. Therefore, oh God, it is yours. We seal it, Lord God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Restoration in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God. Heal the broken hearts. Restore them from within. Kali bizo le matlo fe dama bizo ose ili bizo la Jesus Christ. Ah, asete ke basho soto robo ya. Asete mahaka. We speak the restoration of families. We speak the restoration of families. And devil, we call you out this morning because we know what you're up to. Oh, we know what you're up to. When you break the marriage, you break the family, you break the society. And therefore, as children of God who've been given authority to speak on this land, we declare that families, Lord God, will go to the original plan, which is the design of you. So that families can stay strong, so that the children can be protected, so that the elderly can be taken care of. Lord God, we, we place a demand for the original plan. And anything that has tried to steal away from the family network and unit, we send the word of God to call you out. In the mighty name of Jesus. We want to pray for unemployment this morning. We got thousands of these. Where people are in CCMA cases, where new graduates are jobless, where unfair dismissal, where job losses and retrenchments and long periods of time without employment and hopelessness in the space of employment. I know you've got a comfortable job. You're probably getting your laptop charged and ready to go sit in your beautiful office. But this morning, your brothers and sisters are sitting at home and it's been a couple of years and they've got no plan out. And it's not that they are lazy and sitting at home. There is no opportunity. And we want to just speak to the land for five minutes. To say the word of God tells us wherever we shall lay our feet, we can lay hold. Land produce. Whether it's the governance, whether it's the social structure, whether it's the economic structure, we want to go right to the root to say unemployment is a problem for us all. If our children can't find work, it's a problem even though you work. If your family members can't find work even though you work, it's a problem. So we want to deal with this unemployment and the anxiety and the depression that it comes with. The Bible says that your talents gifts will make room for you but more importantly says whatever you lay your hands to do 
he will bless. We serve a God who's ready to bless the work of our hands. Mm. Give us work this morning, Lord God. Can we pray that this morning? Give us work, Lord God. Yes. Father, we pray for all this Lord God, thank you. Sheba ha also told Come on, I want you to pray. I want you to remember that time when you were looking for a job. And I want you to pray for that person who's in here who is desperately, not just looking for a job to be busy, but looking for a job to feed their families. And Father, we want to pray in the mighty name of Jesus. We speak to this land. Let this land cultivate. Let this land give birth to God. Your opportunity of giving. We pray for jobs for you. We pray for jobs for those who are coming. We pray for jobs, Lord God, and opportunity. We pray for strategy. We pray for divine ways, Lord God, of creating. We pray for industries to open up. We pray for opportunities in every level. We pray for governance, Lord God, and the stewardship, Lord God, of better governance to bring these opportunities. Lord God, if it can happen in other parts of the world, it can happen in this part of the world. Lord God, we pray for Give them ideas, Lord God. Expand their minds, Lord God. Let them not lose hope, Lord God. We pray against depression, anxiety, and the Lord God, we pray that you provide them a hope to get the things that they want. In the mighty name of Jesus, Christ. we thank you and we praise you. Come on, don't get tired. Let's pray this morning. Let's pray this morning. We're here to pray this morning. That Father, as they wake up this morning and send their CVs, you're a God who sees them. As they wake up this morning, give them divine strategy. As they wake up this morning, Lord God, give them a peace that you will take care of them. As they wake up this morning, cover them, Lord God, with your protection. Thank you, Lord God, for opening doors. Thank you, Lord God, for opening industries. Thank you, Lord God, for opening governance. Lord God, we thank you that if it can happen in other parts of the world, it can happen in our part of the world too. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we thank you and we honor you. Father, we honor you in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Woo! In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. We're going to pray for mental health. We're going to pray for mental health. And the devil has messed around with many young people, many young and old, when it comes to their mental health. I love that God tells us what the state of our minds should be. There is no confusion to what mind God requires us to be in. And the devil knows that the best place where he can fight us is our mind. Mm. Because that stops us from hearing the word of God that leads us to unbelief, that leads us to hopelessness, that leads us to anxiety and depression. Mm. So this morning we want to stand in the authority of the word of God that promises us a sound mind over fear. That gives us the confidence to know that we don't have to be anxious. And rather tells us that our mind should be fixated on all those things that are good and well and pleasing so that that we can see God amplified in our lives. We want to take hold of mental illness this morning. Whether it's got a name or it doesn't have a name. Whether it's stage 1 to 3 to 16. We say mental health there's no room for your place. Why? Because we've been given the mind of Christ. He offers us peace instead of destruction. He gives us wholeness instead of brokenness. And this morning we want to stand in agreement with the word of God. That so shall your peace rest on us. Come on, if you've got any mental health issues or you know somebody who does, I want you to pray with vigor this morning. That let God's peace reign over their lives. In the mighty name of Jesus, let's pray. Father, we pray. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God, this is an attack that we lost in the Where the devil has convinced us in the mighty name of Jesus that our minds can be Thank you, Lord God, that you give us the power to captivate and hold captive Christ. In the name of Jesus, we pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord God, that your word is Thank you, Lord God, that you protect our minds. Thank you, that 
that our minds belong to you, that you let your intention be with our intentional with how we think you are, intentional with how we see ourselves. This morning, we just want to share with our minds that depression not take over, that anxiety not take over, that overthinking doesn't take over. But we pray your peace this morning over your children, Lord God, and comfort over your children in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray, Father, Lord God, that your healing will rest on one of God, whether it's a diagnosed depression or it's just a sense of sadness and anxiety or overthinking, Lord God, this morning, we want to speak your peace over it in the mighty name of Jesus. We want to speak your peace over it in the mighty name of Jesus. 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 We thank you, Lord. God. Oh, we thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. We, 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 we got a lot of emails that spoke a lot about the addiction of pornography and masturbation. And you see what, what, what this does, the Bible teaches us that this is a, a, a sin towards your own body. Uh, the devil wants us to, to, to continue to sin against our old bodies. The Bible uh, teaches us that God takes our bodies seriously. He calls it his temple. And oftentimes we find ourselves stuck in these rotations. And we want to speak to the spirit of pornography and masturbation. But not only to that, but to the culture that permits it. And not only that, to the society that makes it okay. And, and not address the mental issues that comes with it. And, and not address the disconnect that comes with it. And, and the feeling of shame and guilt that comes with it. We want to speak to it holistically. That Father God, if anybody finds themselves in that space, Father, we come against the addiction of pornography. But Lord God, we also come against, Lord God, the desires that don't come from you to act with our bodies in a way that you have not called us to act in. Can we pray that this morning? I know it's a type of prayers that we don't see, but they're important. We've got a lot of young people who come to this platform. We don't want to preach a gospel that tells you to be on your knees to pray for your studies, but not a gospel that tells you that you don't have to masturbate and that God can save you from that cycle. And this morning we want to stand in agreement with the word of God that indeed our bodies are temples of God. Therefore we will treat them with honor like he treats them with honor. As we cry out to him to heal it, Father, we ask that it heals from all devilish behavior that has taken place. This includes fornication, masturbation, porn, anything that is not given by God. Can we pray that this morning? Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God. Ah, the devil, you're a liar. You've kept us in loops of porn and masturbation and fornication. You've given us a culture that has told us that it's okay. Music videos that perpetuate it. Films that perpetuate it. Storylines that perpetuate it. Media that perpetuates it. You've told us it's okay. But today we go to the word of God and see it as it is. That God, our bodies belong to you. If it does not make you happy, if it does not edify our bodies, if it does not do us well, then Father, help us with the bondage of pornography and masturbation. Lord God, we thank you that you have the ability to rescue us. Thank you, Lord God, that you have the ability to pull us out, both men and women, Lord God. Even women who keep it a secret and behind closed doors where the culture doesn't really allow it. Lord God, we bring it to the surface. We come with a repentant heart this morning to say, forgive us, Lord God, for defiling our bodies. Forgive us, O oh Lord, for mishandling the gift of the temple. And Father, this morning, we ask that you set us free from the bondage of pornography. Set us free from the bondage of masturbation. Set us free from the bondage of fornication in the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus Christ in the mighty name of Jesus Christ young and old male and female set us free great King set us free great King it will no longer be our portion it will no longer be our lives it will no longer be our daily devil you are a liar devil you're a liar you've broken marriages with this nonsense you've killed self-esteem with this nonsense 
You've turned kids into, into sex objects with this nonsense. And we are here to declare that no longer shall it exist in our midst. Lord God, if there's an addiction level, we cast it down this morning in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We no longer make it a secret in Christianity. We call it as it is and we say, come out from where you are. You have no power over us. You have no power over our children. You have no power over our marriages in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus, 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 in the mighty name of Jesus. Ah, oh, Lord God, we cry out for the youth today. In the mighty name of Jesus, we cry out for marriages today. In the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. We want to pray for spiritual growth. And I want to be careful with this. It's not this enlightenment, but it's a journey and a walk with God. We, we can't pray for spiritual growth if we can't first acknowledge whether or not we're submitted to this king. Mm. So we don't pray for spiritual growth. We pray for a thriving relationship with God. The Bible says work on your salvation. So it's not a sprinkling of magic power that you are now spiritually strong. No, it's doing life with God that you grow in character, in love, and in understanding of who he is. So spiritual growth, and, and I say it as spiritual growth because we got a lot of it in the emails, but what in actual fact we are crying for when we ask for spiritual growth is, is to know him more. And this is not a prayer point for those who wrote emails. This is a prayer point for everybody who's here. I want us to pray that with vigor this morning, that Father, to know you more. To know you more. Let's pray that this morning. To know you more. To know your heart more. To know your character more. To discern. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I want us just to pray a minute over this one. This is everybody in ministry. I'm, we're praying for pastors and leaders and, 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 and those who are serving in different departments. People who are working the field of God. That Father, that God, you will energize them. Where they've gotten tired, where they felt betrayed, where people have left where things get hard, where the sacrifices that are unspoken, Lord God, only you can reward. We speak a revival over those, Lord God, who have taken their lives to serve you. Come on, I want you to pray for your pastor. I want you to pray for your church. I want you to pray for that youth leader that led you to Christ. I want you to pray for that grandmother who told you about Jesus. I want you to pray for those people who are an important connecting piece to daily making people aware of God's goodness, that they may not grow weary, that they not be tired, that the disappointments and the sacrifices may not leave them backward in not giving to God. Can we pray for them this morning? Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray for your sons and daughters, your leaders in community,
communities, Lord God, pastors, men and women of God, Lord God, who have dedicated a large part of their lives, Lord Jesus, to serve. We pray for churches, Lord God, across the continent and different parts of the world. Lord God, where they're feeling tired and exhausted by just the everyday doings of ministry, fill them up again, Lord Jesus. Fill them up again, Lord Jesus. Let they cup overflow. Those areas of their lives where they're struggling, Lord God, only you know where, Lord God, they need to be carried. We pray for the right people to come around them, Lord God. We pray for the right support system, Lord Jesus. We pray for the right provision, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, that you will fill them up afresh in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God. Thank you that you make a way for them in the mighty name of Jesus. We honor them, Lord God, and we pray that you continue to bless them in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God. Whether it's finances, Lord God, whether it's just exhaustion of the body of working so hard on the harvest of God, whether it's their personal lives and the things they are personally going through. Father, we just want to pray this morning that you shower them with your love, that you protect them, Lord God, that you give them the things that they need, even the ones that they have not yet uttered. While they were yet speaking, Lord God, you are an answering God. We speak a special grace over, Lord God, the churches and communities that are standing boldly for faith in this time. We pray over the missionaries. We pray those who serve in churches, Lord God, those who volunteer. Lord God, from instrumentalists to ushers, to those who are part of hospitality to cleaning, to those who are in, in ushering and intercession. Lord God, any area that they may be working with, we pray that they will not tire, Lord God. When Jesus was asked, what is greatness? His response was to serve. Make them great, great God. That greatness comes from serving you. And what better place to serve than in the kingdom of God. Revive them again, great Jesus. Revive them again, Lord Jesus. Revive them again, Lord Jesus. We want to pray for suicide. We got a lot of messages with people receiving suicidal thoughts. With they're toying with the idea to take their lives. Let me tell you about an interesting guy in the Bible. His name is Judas. And oftentimes, when we speak of Judas, we speak about the guy who 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 messed up and you know made a big blunder where Jesus was concerned. He is the betrayer. He is the bad guy. If anybody calls you Judas, we, we kind of wonder the type of character you are. But this is how Judas's story ends. He takes his life. The difference between Judas and Peter, who made the same mistake is that Peter knew that there was grace. Peter knew that there was love. Peter knew that there was some sort of hope. Judas was hopeless because he thought what he had done there was no redemption for. So the spirit of suicide tends to make us feel there is no redemption. And Father, this morning we want to declare redemption. We want to declare restoration. We want to declare, Lord God, that we can't be taking our lives when we have a God like you. Who saves the way you do. Who restores the way you do. Who loves the way you do. And this morning, Lord God, we want to pray for all those who want to take their lives and say live long. The word of God says you will satisfy us with long life. Ooh, can we just pray that over their lives right now? Father, we pray. Long life over them. The day is alive. Give them long life. We come against all those suicidal thoughts that have made people feel less and unworthy of living. Father God, we declare life over them in the mighty name of Jesus. We speak peace in their mind, Lord God. We remind them that they are fearfully and wonderfully made by you, Lord God. Lord God, we want to remind them that there is hope. There is love, there is mercy, there's forgiveness, there's redemption, there's freedom in you in the mighty name of Jesus. And Father, this morning we pray that Father God, those who have attempted to take their lives, you are concerned to take their lives. Lord God, we speak an injection of might over them this morning. Oh, <laughs> 
In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Lord God, we thank you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we thank you. Woo! Woo! There's still a couple of more that we've got to run through. I'm just going to choose the last few. I see we're out of time. And I know most people have to get to work. We got a lot of emails around homelessness. Yeah. And this is something that we're seeing is becoming prevalent in South Africa where people are left destitute mm-hmm. with no hope, with no place to call their home. Ooh, you are our safe refuge, Craig. Yes. You are our safe refuge, Great King. Mm-hmm. You are our safe refuge, God. Mm-hmm. And Father, we want to pray for those who are homeless this morning. Oh, that took time, Lord God, to write to us and ask, Lord God, that you make a way. And we believe you can make a way. Can we just pray for those? And not even those who wrote letters, even those who are going to drive past this morning on the road. That, Father, you see them. I know we drive past them. They're like they don't exist. But, Father, you see them. Let's just pray for those who have no homes and no family support. Can we pray that? Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. You are our safe place. And we know that, Lord God, our safety and our well-being is your priority. Mahaya for these people, Lord God. We pray for those who find themselves destitute. We pray for those, Lord God, who find themselves hopeless and hopeless. We want to speak your grace over them, Lord God. We want to protect them. We want to speak your grace over them, Lord God. We pray that you make a way. Ah, uh, dear God, make a way this morning. Make a way this morning, Lord God. We thank you for tangible, practical ways, Lord God. Send help, Lord Jesus. Send help this morning. Make a way this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray, Lord God, that you restore their hope. I pray, Lord God, that you remind them that you are a great God. Cover them in the mighty name of Jesus. Through the weather changes, through the difficulties, as they lay there hungry without food. Lord God, make a way. Send us, Lord God, to be the answers that they need. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. We pray for them and we cover them, Lord God. We pray that you restore their dignity, Lord Jesus. Lord God, that you remind them that they're fearfully and wonderfully made. Even though the world has forgotten them. Lord God, we reiterate this morning that you have not forgotten them. That your eye is on them in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. That if the sparrow does not have to need and flowers don't have to take care of themselves. That you are a God who takes care of them. Father, we pray that you send help in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Even today. We thank you for the testimonies that will come. We thank you for the homes that you will provide. Thank you that we are the help, Lord God, that they've been waiting for. Thank you that children of God, Lord God, from all parts of the world will be moved to step in. That we will remember, Lord God, that God takes note of us helping those who are in need. And he holds it in high regard. Let us be the answer to this generation in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We want to pray for Christians that are persecuted. Persecuted in their workspaces, persecuted in their families, persecuted in their homes. I'm speaking to those who are the first to be saved. Who have to carry the burden of being looked down on because of the faith they have chosen. Persecuted on social platforms because you've chosen to be vocal about your God. Persecuted on any level. We want to just speak God's grace over you. That God promises us that we may be pressed but he does not allow for us to be taken out. So even though persecution is quite frankly part of the Christian walk. 
that we will not get tired or be worn out by persecution, but we may be reminded that's where God shows his strength. And this morning we want to speak encouragement into your spirit, that even though you're persecuted, that God sees you. And that he will make a way for you in those spaces. In your workspace, you're persecuted. God will stand for you. In your family, you're persecuted and laughed at for your faith. God will stand for you. The Bible tells us that the world is waiting in mourning and groaning for true sons of God. And Father, we pray that let those who are true sons of God not be shied away by persecution. But yet, Lord God, that we learn to stand. The Bible says, having done all things we stand. The Bible tells us that we're a fortified city and this morning we stand Lord God as those who have chosen God as the authority of our lives. Uh, that no longer will we downplay our faith. Uh, that no longer will we act shy about whose we belong to. Uh, that even though they persecute us is when we'll be louder and clearer. That Jesus is Lord. He is the way, the truth and the life. Uh, we are fully submitted to him. There is no other name that can save and Father, if we face persecution, give us the strength to stand in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Lord God. We trust that, Lord God, you will see us through. Trust that you will see us through. We pray for those who are like-minded communities of other Christians who we will stand with, Lord God. Send us help from every part of the world, Lord God. Send us those who will run with vigor and truth and realness, Lord God. Send us those, Lord God, who are not looking for God as an exchange platform, but are looking for God because he is a great king. Yes, Father, we pray for community this morning. And even in those times of persecution and hard times, Lord God, that you will be kind to us and send us those who will stand with us. In the mighty name of Jesus, that your word will comfort us. That your presence will be sweet enough for us. That you will fill us, Lord God, until we overflow. Help us to stand even though the world thinks we are jokes. Help us to stand even though we are persecuted. Help us to stand, great King, in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's take the last few ones. We want to speak against tormenting spirits. We want to pray against soul ties and witchcraft. We want to speak about anything that is devil related that is meant to come and torment you at any level. Whether you can't sleep at night, whether you're having weird dreams or you're seeing figures, whether children are speaking languages and scary things, whether you feel like your life is not progressing, whatever that it is, we want to take hold of those things. Can we pray that quickly before we go? Father, we thank you that there is no other authority except you. No spirit can reign and take dominance over you. We want to speak against those things this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. That Father, we lay hold of those demons. We say, Devil, get out of our children, get out of our families. In the mighty name of Jesus, we speak peaceful sleep. We thank you that our minds are safe. Thank you that we cannot over be taken, Lord God, by spirit. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Father, we lay claim, Lord God. We speak peace in our homes. We speak peace in our sleep. Every demon, every force that is lurking around, we command you to leave in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We command you to exit in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Lord God, we demand this morning your peace to reign, Lord God. That tormenting spirits will leave in the mighty name of Jesus. We send the word of God that says every name will bow. No the name of Jesus. And Lord God, we just have the name of Jesus to say. That is the name that we will win with, Lord God. That is the name that we will come for. It's the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Lord God. We come against any demon, any witchcraft. Anything, Lord God, that has been cultivated to steal life, to steal peace, to steal joy, to steal protection from us in the mighty name of Jesus. Anything that has been built to hold us tied, Lord God, this morning we send the name that is above every other name, which is the name of Jesus. And we declare in the mighty name of Jesus, let your peace reign so Come on, I want you to fight 
a little bit. I want you to fight a little bit. We're almost done. I want you to fight a little bit. Leave it here. We'll take the last two. We'll take the last two. We want to pray for men in our generation. We want to pray for the men in our generation. We don't believe that men are trash. We don't believe that men are no worth. We don't believe that it's over with them. We do recognize that a lot has gone wrong in our generation with men. But Father, we want to declare that you made them. That you made them. That, that make no mistake, the devil has no right to rearrange or change the narrative of who they are. Because they belong to you, we bring them back to you. We want to come against masculine or to masculine toxicity. We want to remind them that the definition of manhood doesn't come from the world, it comes from God. And that their source of knowing who they are doesn't come from the culture of the world they find themselves in. It comes from the one who made the world. And gave them purpose and gave them function and gave them men. We want to speak God's blessing on men. That you are necessary for this generation. That God has called you for such a time as this. That you are everything that God has called you to be. I'm reminded of Jeremiah and how beautifully God speaks to a young man. And I want to believe that God is speaking to men this morning. That so has he chosen you. So has he appointed you, anointed you and set you apart for such a time as this. And even then to you. May he touch your lips and give you utterance to be a problem solver in this generation. Can we pray over the men? We're speaking fathers, grandfathers, brothers, cousins. We're speaking men. That, Father, there is no confusion when it comes to them. Lord God, we're done labeling them things that you have not called them. We're going to start to call them like you call them. You call them blessed. You call them anointed. You call them mighty men. You call them, Lord God, chosen. It's like when you spoke to Gideon, Lord God, even though he saw himself as less, you said, Gideon, mighty man. Father, we pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Compassionate men, who, men who are willing to die for their families, men who hear God's voice, men who stand firm for justice, men who defend their loved ones, men who do right by their families, men who stand for justice, men who stand for justice. Lord God, we come against the confusion of identity and who you have called them to be. Thank you that the blueprint is you, Lord God, that if they have to see what a man was. Jesus Christ, Lord God. No longer shall we label them any 
that you have not called them in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Lord God. Thank you for men. Thank you for men. Thank you. Thank you for their lives, Lord God. We come against premature death. We come against recklessness. We come against loss of hope. We come against anxiety and depression. We come against societal standards pressing them down. Oh Lord, we speak your peace in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Woo, we pray for men this morning. Oh, be kind to them, Lord God. May they experience your love and your protection. Lebo shehemaka satayaba. Woo! In the mighty name of Jesus. The story changes with our generation. Ah, oh, Lord God, give it to us. We, we, we want to be the demonstration how the narrative can change with our generation. That it doesn't have to look like past generations. We don't speak badly of them, but give us a new story. Give us a new song. Where men will be upright and fight for justice. Where men will be trusted as protectors. Where men will be godly and mighty. Where men will be the cornerstone of society. Woo, we don't tell you enough you're a cornerstone. You're a cornerstone, you are needed. You are necessary. And the better version of you is necessary. Oh, that you would trust him. Oh, that you would submit to him. Oh, that you would see him. Oh, that you would see yourself through his eyes. You are good men. And we will continue to pray for you and cover you. You are good men. We will continue to call you out of the dangers and potholes that the devil has let you slip into. We will continue to trust that the good work that God has begun with you, he himself will perfect it. In the mighty name of Jesus, we want to pray for women this morning. Those who are pregnant for safe deliveries, those who have complications with their pregnancies, those who are struggling with post partum depression, depression. those who keep having miscarriages, those who want to hold their children in their hands as families with their husbands. Oh, they're a gift from you. We can't buy them at a shop. We can't manufacture them. Only you can give it. Father, we want to pray for wombs all over the continent this morning. Thank you for the gift of life. We come against those miscarriages, Lord God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We speak life right now. And we come against the shame and the guilt that comes with loss of a child. Lord God, we speak peace. Those, Lord God, who are about to deliver in this fear of safety. Lord God, we speak to those doctors, those nurses, those midwives, that their hands belong to you. Lord God, they will do what is meant to be done. We pray for safe deliveries. Thank you for the bundles of joy that are landing soon. We speak protection over them. And Father, we speak to husbands and wives and families that have been waiting for a while. You know the desires of their hearts. We pray that you would bless them, Lord God. We pray that, Lord God, you would take away the shame or the guilt or the heaviness of not finding where they want to be. May they fall in love with you and see that you love them far more than they can ever imagine. And I pray, Lord God, that you reach out to them, Lord God. That, Lord God, you will give them a joy. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. We're going to pray for ourselves now as we close. I know some of you had to log off because we're going to work. It's a weird prayer point, but it's a necessary one. May I never cease. You see, it's, 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 not, it's not usually the starting that's important. It's the reality of how hard the journey sometimes can be that makes us stop along the way. So as we start this intentional move to be more deliberate about our prayer lives, we've started today, it's already begun. But may we never cease. We don't need a live to pray. You don't need a big issue to pray can be as small as Lord where are my keys help me Holy Spirit mm -hmm. to Lord God they've just said I've got blood cancer heal me Lord mm -hmm. 
that prayer may not move from our lips. It's a heart posture. The prayer point as we close this morning, may I never cease. It's you speaking to yourself that may I never cease. The fact that I sat through this hour means, Lord God, I've started. And even tomorrow when I wake up, I've started. Even in the next two months, I've started. May I never cease. That Lord God, give me the zeal to continue even when it's not favorable, even when it's not easy. Even when I don't have the words for it, let me come and just cry before you. Mm. But may I never cease. Jesus speaks and he says such an important thing. He says, temptations will come the only way. And temptations don't speak to stealing sweets or stepping out on your wife or doing something. Temptation speaks to anything that speaks contrary to what God has destined for you. Anything that will lure you in the direction away from what God wants you. And Jesus says the only way to withstand that is to pray. Then he says don't stop praying because the temptation doesn't stop. So shall we pray is an acknowledgement that now that we have started. We don't need to call a prayer gathering. No, by yourself in your bedroom. Now that we have started. You don't have to speak big English. Now that I have started. Lord God, may I never cease. Can we pray that before we jump off? Father in the mighty name. Come on, I want you to pray for yourself this morning. That Lord God, we don't come to you because we've got problems. We come to you because we have access to you. Woo! Not let me start now that I'm here. Now that we're a generation that knows that God answers. Now that we're a generation that knows that prayer works. Now that we're a generation that is willing to open up our mouths to speak the good and the uncomfortable. Now that we have started. Father, may we never see. May your name never depart from our lips. May your praises never depart from our lips. May the calling of the name Jesus never depart from our lips. May the bending of our knees never become too tiresome. May calling upon you in all situations never cease. Now that we have started. Lord God, even when it gets tough, Lord God, we don't want to cease. Let our mouths continue to sing your praises. Let our mouths continue to cry out for help. Let our mouths continue to cry out for mercy, repentance, forgiveness, grace, love, comfort. Lord God, now that we have started. Now that we have started. Oh, somebody's praying for the very first time today. Now that you've started. You haven't prayed with so much zeal in a long time now that you have started. Now that you know that you have access to this God. Come on, pray that over yourself. I will wake up in the morning. I will make time as I'm driving, as I'm going for a jog, as I'm sitting in my room, as I'm alone in the house. I will make time now that I've started. It, it, it never stops. I will continue. Every opportunity I have, I will lift up my voice to the Lord. Every opportunity I have, I will sing praises to Him. Every opportunity I have, I will commune with Him. Every opportunity I have, I will cry out to Him now that I've started. Help us not to grow weary, Holy Spirit. Help us to stay, Holy Spirit. Help us to keep trusting. Help us to stay on our knees. Woo! Prayer is not an event, it's a lifeline. You can't live without it. And we're sorry that we made it an event. We're sorry that we made it a 15 minute in the morning. Father, but now that we have started. Woo! Will our prayers not only be about us, but our communities? Will our cry not only be about our needs, but for the needs that we see around us? Will our cry to you not only be fixated on what's happening in our lives, but open up our eyes to see where we can exercise the privilege of raising up our voices and asking you to intervene. Now that we've started, Lord. 
Holy Spirit, help us continue to pray. Help us to prioritize prayer. Help us to prioritize you. Help us to see you. Holy Spirit, even when we don't have anything to say, the word tells us you're there to give us utterance of the things that we need to say. Holy Spirit, I pray for a new infilling in everyone this morning. Do something new in us this morning. Something that can never be undone. Thank you that prayer is no longer a point. Prayer is very much a part of our lives. Help us, Lord God, to never keep silent. Help us, Lord God, never to see you as the solution. Help us, Lord God, not to find alternatives elsewhere. Help us to stay, great King. Ah, devil, you've messed with us for far too long. You've got us busy doing everything else but talking to our Father. Mm, you've had us growing movements and all sorts of things but not talking to our Father. And Father, this morning we want to declare, even as a family of JTJT, wherever you go, we go. Wherever you send us, we go. We don't want to do anything without you anymore, Lord God. Help us to stay close enough to hear your voice. And not only for us just to speak, but to hear you and the direction you give us now that we have started. Help us, Lord God, to continue and to never cease. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Eva. Thank you, Great King. Thank you, Master. Thank you for the lives that you touch today, Lord. Thank you for the answers that you give this morning. Thank you that hope you restore. Thank you for the deliverance from addiction and bounty. Thank you for healing this morning. Haleboha. 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 Lord God, the glory belongs to you. And even in our private times, Lord God, when we think of this moment, let it be praise that comes out of our mouth and adoration and exaltation to a great king. Thank you for what you've done in this place. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. We cover everybody with the blood of Jesus. We thank you that they protect it. And even as they start their day and go about it, Lord God, thank you that you cover them. Pray that their mouths will not be shut, that even as the day continues, they'll continue to utter words to you, Lord God. We open up the confidence of those who were shy to speak to you, felt that they were not worthy to speak to you, felt inferior to speak to you. We thank you, Lord God, that you've opened up that door. They can now come boldly to you. Thank you for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for your presence. We honor you, great King. Ah, may we never see. May we never cease. Have mercy on us. We ask that you help us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Shall we pray? That's it. <laughs> Thank you so much for sticking out with us. I know we're way over time. I have no idea how we have over 5,000 people still here. I thought all of you would have left by now. Uh, but we just want to thank you and honor you. Thank you for giving us the extra time. Um, this was a first of its kind. Uh, and uh, hopefully God will help us to continue to mold it in a way. Um, we're going to make prayer a big part of who we are. Um, so that's our legacy. That's the legacy. That's what we want to be known for. Uh, for the word of God and prayer. So um, we are excited to go on this journey with you all. And we'll continue to pray for you. Um, and continue to cover you and we pray that you continue to pray for us uh, we're going to put the prayer points we had 
38 themes. I think we did most of them. Shout out. <laughs> But I think there were some that were left out. So we're going to put it up on the socials. You can just go to the Jesus is Jesus that page. It will be there. And I want you to take time to go look over them and see which ones that we maybe didn't touch on or some that you want to continue praying for. Again, you're not looking for your prayer point or where you fit in. You're looking for the opportunity to open up your mouth and function as God has made you to do, right? So you go to those 38 and let's make that 38 our business. Until we have the next 38, this is what we're dealing with for the next couple of weeks or days and as the Lord leads us. So I want you to go there, even if it's just once a day, and go, oh Lord, I just want to pray for 31, it's homelessness. I just want to pray for 33, it's a hardened heart. I just want to pray, you know, for 28, point number 28, salvation for loved ones. I really want us to, to make this our daily, that we take time to pray. So go to the page, see the prayer points that we received from over 2,000 people. Uh, who asked for prayers and, and I know you may have not sent an email but there's something on your heart let's go over there and share it and see how the Lord will use us have a splendid Friday we love you uh, we'll see each other Thursday at 7 o'clock um, right here on this page God bless you love you bye, bye. bye.